Angles of elevation and depression, section 8.4. Uh, for the most part, this should uh, look kind of familiar to you. Uh, the only difference is they, what they call it, angles of elevation and depression. But a lot of the work today is going to be very familiar, uh, very similar to the stuff we've been doing and have done in past chapters. So the only really new part today is they're kind of putting it all together into a story problem, which are everybody's favorite. So again, angles of elevation and depression. Angle of elevation. An angle of elevation is formed by a horizontal line and a line of sight above it. Now again, think about the word elevation. When you think of the word elevation, what do you think of? High, going up, right? So the angle of elevation is the angle that is made when you kind of look up. So if you were to look at the ceiling, if you were to look at something above you, that is an angle of elevation. You're going above. The, what I call opposite of that, or reverse of that, is what's called the angle of depression. Uh, an angle of depression is formed by a horizontal line and a line of sight below it. When you see the word depression, what do you think of? Sad. Sad. What else do you think of? Like low, going down, right? You're down on the dumps. I don't know. There's a lot of different expressions for it. You're not high. But depression means you're going down, so the angle of depression is when you kind of look down. All right. Now, those red angles there, kind of marked them red there. What type of angles are those? Now, think about that here. A little remembering from chapter 3, I believe it was. What type of angles are those? Interior? Close. Exterior. No, they're interior. What are they? Oh, they said op opposite. Did you say opposite? Yeah. No, it's not opposite. They're actually... Alternate interior angles. Yeah, those red angles would be alternate interior angles. So if these two lines are parallel, what does that make those two red angles? They are the same. They're congruent. Yeah. All right, and that's important to know today. So the angles of elevation and the angle of depression, as long as those lines are parallel, they will be the same. They'd be congruent. So number one, classify each angle as an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. Number one, angle one. Is that an angle of elevation or depression? Is the angle going up or is it going down? What do you say, Allie? That would be elevation. Nice job. So number one is elevation. Number two, what type of angle would that one be? Is that an angle of elevation or depression, Joe? Depression. That is depression. Great work. What about these two? Use the figure for exercises three and four. Classify each angle as an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. So as you look here, angles three and four. Angle three, is that elevation or depression? What are you thinking, Reagan? That is an angle of depression. Nice job. Wait, why is four depression? Angle three is. Nope, sorry if I did my mistake. Uh, number four, angle four. Is that an angle of elevation or an angle of depression? What do you say, Quinlan? Elevation. elevation. Nice job. All right, take a couple seconds. Try these four. Now there's multiple angles up there. Try these four on your own. All right, so let's look at this here. Use the figure for exercise five to eight. Classify each angle as an angle of elevation or an angle of depression. Angle one, what do you say, Samantha? Angle one? What did you say? Elevation. Elevation. Thank you. Sorry. Elevation. What about angle two, Suter? Depression. Angle two is depression. Uh, number seven. Angle three. What do you say, Tech? That is depression. And number eight, angle four. What do you say about angle four and eight? That is elevation. Nice job. Again, the difference is, are you looking up or are you looking down with respect to that angle? All right, so why do we need to know that? Well, we need to use it for these story problems, kind of real-life scenarios here. So you can, use, you can solve problems by using angles of elevation and angles of depression. For example, Sarah is watching a parade from a 20-foot balcony. 
The angle of depression to the parade is 47 degrees. What is the distance between Sarah and the parade? So you look there, they kind of have a diagram drawn over here for us. It's kind of a rough one. If I know that this angle right there is 47 degrees, what else do I know? Anybody, what else do I know? I can find angle A. I can also find what? Angle B. What's angle B going to be? Yeah, angle B is going to be 47. Remember, because these are parallel, they show they're parallel. The lines show they're parallel. So that means they are alternate interior angles, and that has to be 47 degrees. And now that I know that's 47 degrees, I can use my trig functions, primarily my sine button here, and I can find the opposite over hypotenuse and solve for the missing length, which is approximately 27 feet. All right, so we can use the angles to help us solve these problems along the way. Again, still using sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Wait, how are both angles 47 and nine? So let's look at number nine. When the angle of elevation to the sun is 52 degrees, a tree casts a shadow that is nine meters long. What is the height of the tree? Round to the nearest tenth of a meter. So if you can see there, it's kind of tough to see. I know there's up on the board, but there's an X right here. All right, I have a 52 degree angle. I know the bottom, the base is nine, and I want to try and find that height of the tree. Now recall, we are using trig functions, so I should have SOKOTOA written up at the top. Now, as I look at this, I need to figure out which trig function do I need to use? Am I using sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse? Am I using cosine? which is adjacent over hypotenuse, or am I using tangent, which is opposite over adjacent? Who thinks they got the correct trig function here? Anybody? Somebody said I heard. Starts with a T, it is tangent. Yeah, because I have the opposite and the adjacent angles, or the sides, I should say, I need to use tangent. So I'm going to set up an equation here that says the tangent of 52 equals opposite is x over the adjacent, which is 9. So tangent of 52 equals x over 9. Now I need to solve for that. So I'm going to take tangent of 52 times 9. Tangent of 52 times 9. And again, round it to the nearest tenth of a meter, I believe this one says. Round to the nearest tenth of a meter. So tangent 52 times 9. The height of that tree to the nearest tenth of a meter is about what, Samantha? 11.5 meters. Nice job. Number 10. A person snorkeling sees a turtle on the ocean floor at an angle of depression of 38 degrees. She is 14 feet above the ocean floor. How far from the turtle is she? Round to the nearest foot. Well, in here, the angle of depression is 38 degrees. We see that. What other angle do I know then? Now, we've got some great calls for this. The turtle angle, that's what everybody's called it all day long. Yeah, the turtle angle is 38 degrees. All right, well, if the turtle angle is 38 degrees, what trig function am I going to use now? Is it sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, or tangent opposite over adjacent? Nathan, what are you thinking here? What? You think cosine? Does anybody agree with him? No, because it should actually be sine. See how 14 is opposite of the 38 degrees? Huh? That's opposite. So I have the sine of 38 equals 14 over x. So sine of 38 equals 14 over x. Now on this problem, am I going to multiply or divide these? 
I'm going to have to divide them. Now, again, here's kind of the clue. When x is in the numerator, I multiply to find my answer. When x is in the denominator, I have to divide them to find my answer. So there's kind of your clue. x is in the numerator, we multiply. x is in the denominator, we divide. I'm going to divide this, so 14 divided by the sine of 38, and I get approximately how many feet tech? 23. Approximately 23 feet. Now, as I look at this, uh, right before Christmas, we were talking about triangle inequalities. Now, remember, in a right triangle, what is always the longest side? The hypotenuse. So would it ever make sense for this answer to be less than 14? No, because it's the hypotenuse. So always think about that as you're solving these problems. Don't just go be in such a hurry to get an answer. Think about it. If it's the hypotenuse, it's got to be longer than the legs. If it's the legs, it's got to be shorter than the hypotenuse. That will help you. All right, next problem here. Number 11. Jared is standing 12 feet from a rock climbing wall. Okay, so do I have a diagram here? No. What am I going to want to do on problems like these? Though? I'm going to want to... Draw a diagram. Anytime you have these type of problems, you want to draw a diagram. So I have Jared. Oops, wrong guy. Jared's down here. He's 12 feet from a walk cl rock climbing wall. And his buddy, you know, he's up here scaling it. He's pretty cool. I have some awesome drawings. It's all right. Um, when he looks up to see his friend um, ascend the wall, the angle of elevation is 56 degrees. So this angle is 56 degrees. How high up the wall is his friend? What am I trying to find here? I'm trying to find the height, right? So as I look at this, am I trying to find the hypotenuse or my other leg? Am I trying to find one or two here? I kind of labeled the sides, if you see. Am I trying to find side one or side two? I'm trying to find side two because that's my height. So that means that's where my X goes. So here's my x. Now as I look at this, which trig function am I going to have to use? When I think of so -ka toa when I think of so -toa here, which trig function is this? Darian, what are you thinking? It is tangent. Nice. So I'm going to take the tangent of 56 equals x over 12. Now, as I look at a problem like this, am I going to multiply my answers or divide them? Multiply. Nice job. So tangent of 56 times 12. And I think this says round to the nearest foot. So as I round this one to the nearest foot, I get an answer that is, Amy, did you get it? No. Oh. What would you say? It is 18 feet. Nice job. Nice work. Again, the biggest thing on problems like these is you will want to draw a diagram just so you can visually see where the triangles are and what you need. If you can't visualize it, it's very tough to see what you need. Okay? Number 12, Maria. And plus, it's really cool just to draw diagrams. We include some art. Excuse me, students, if you are attending the... Yes. No, yes. Uh, 12, Maria is looking out a 17-foot high window. Wait, well, can I go to this? There's kind of this building here. Hey, can I go? Yeah. There's Maria. She's inside the building. She's looking out there. Oops, wait. You know, there's some deer down here. I draw some awesome deer. I got some, you know. It's the first time that's happened all day, probably. And I got some tails there. There's my deer. Okay, pretty awesome pictures. Gotta love the drawings. That's the fun part about math. You get some art there once in a while. But Maria is looking out a 17 foot high window. Well, that's 17 feet right there. Okay, either way you want to look at it, 17 feet. The angle of depression to the deer is 26 degrees. So that angle right there is 26 degrees. That's the angle of depression. What other angle do I know then? If I look at this, if my angle of depression here is 26 degrees, do I know the angle from the deer there? Yeah, because they're alternate interior angles. This has to be 26 degrees as well. Nice. Now it says, what is the horizontal distance from Maria to the deer? What's it mean to be horizontal? 
horizontal is like flat on the ground, right? So I want to find the horizontal distance, which is the flat on the ground distance. I want to find that distance right there. So as I look at this, which trig function am I going to use, Ali? I think you said it. That tangent function. Nice job. So I'm going to take the tangent of 26, and I'm going to set that equal to what here? Tangent of 26 equals 17 over x, because it's opposite over adjacent. So the opposite of 26 is 17. The adjacent angle is x. Now am I going to multiply or divide these? Now I'm going to divide them. Nice job. So I get the tangent of 26 equals 17 over x, which means my horizontal distance to the nearest foot is going to come out and be approximately 35 feet. If you rounded a little bit differently, you might have gotten 34, but the best answer is 35 feet. All right, try these next two on your own. The diagram at the bottom there goes for number 13. Number 14 uses kind of the same diagram, just one slight difference. Take a couple seconds to try these. All right, so let's look at this here. Lisa sees a bird's nest high in a tree. She decides to use trigonometry to estimate how high the nest is. Because why not? She must She's be really bored. She, she just loves her life. She's going to use trig to find, you know, how high the nest is. Must be really it's great bored. stuff. Like the Wi-Fi must be down, the power... So number 13. Lisa walks 15 feet from the base of the tree. She measures an angle of elevation from the ground to the nest of 62 degrees. Find how high the nest is above the ground. We're trying to find the height. So that means... This is my x. And then what trig function am I going to use, Anna? It is going to be 13, yeah, tangent. So the tangent of 62 equals opposite x over adjacent 15. And I'm going to then multiply them because x is in the numerator. And I get an answer of what, Tiana? 28 feet. Nice job. Now the next one. Very similar type problem. Lisa spots the mother bird on a branch above the nest. She measures an angle of elevation to the bird of 67 degrees. Found how high the mother bird is above the ground to the nearest foot. What's the only thing that changes here, Allie? The degrees. So instead of 62, I'm going to do tangent of 67 equals x over 15. And what's my answer there then, Allie? 35 feet. Nice That's job. Boom. Look at that. We all love story problems now. It's craziness. Here's, oh, wait, back to one. All right, here's your assignment. 